What do you get when you put, sounds like a bad joke. What do you get when you take a 70 to 200 EF, adapt it with an awesome speed booster like Viltrox onto the Canon R7? Well, you get this. You get an extremely large and heavy contraption here that does produce amazing images, but is it worth it? So today we're gonna to go in my driveway, we're gonna take some video, we're gonna take some photo, and I'm gonna have you decide for yourself if this is a good fit. I have my opinions, but I will share those at the end. But first, we gotta talk about the important things about this. And that's the fact that my left arm is really tired right now. So I'm gonna show you how much this stuff actually weighs. Here's the Viltrox 0.71 speed booster for Canon EF to RF. The amazing thing about this adapter is it turns your EF glass into RF glass, but on a crop sensor body like the R7, it all of a sudden uses all of the glass element on the back. Only a portion of the back element glass is actually being used when on an R7, but the moment you put this on top, click it in, it takes all that light magnification and gets right into the whole glass element putting it onto that one tiny little sensor on the Canon R7. I shouldn't say tiny because an APS-C 1.6 times crop is not that tiny. It is magnifying, grabbing all that element, bringing in more light inside of your camera sensor and therefore making a 2.8 into a two. So it's bringing it a stop down and giving that more shallow depth of field. Now, just to give you a heads up of how much this weighs with the adapter, three pounds, 10.9 ounces, so almost three pounds, 11 ounces, which is pushing that four pound mark. So this is four pounds all by itself. Put that on top of a camera, and now you have it right here. Let's see what that weighs. So now you have five pounds, 1.9 ounces, wow. That is a heavy piece of equipment to bring with you at a shoot or a wedding all day long. So is it practical? Well, we're gonna find out. So just to let you know, this is what it looks like without the speed booster on. This is at 70 millimeters. And so it does have more of a punch in compared to a full frame. I actually have the R7 because I want the lenses to punch in a bunch, but it is nice that you can do the speed booster and instead of a 2.8, all of a sudden this lens becomes a two. And if you have a 1.4, all of a sudden it becomes a 1.2 or a one. Actually, I think a 1.4 becomes a one which would be amazing bokeh. I should check that out. And disclaimer, this isn't scientific by all means. This is just very objective everyday use. So you make the decision on if this is the kind of look you like. Okay, 135, so 135 millimeters. The crop is 1.6. I'm gonna back up a little bit more because this has more of a punch than with the speed booster. I'm also gonna do a few photo tests. I'm gonna take off the ND filter. So you're just looking at the glass of the 70 to 200 instead. Probably if you're not doing anything fast paced that needs a lot of focus, um, that speed booster is gonna probably give you some beautiful bokeh. And so that was 135 millimeters. Right now we are on the 200 millimeters. More of a crop in here. So I'm gonna go way back here to the end of the driveway. And where I'm standing is where I'll be standing or where I have stood when it was the crop sensor. So you have an idea of what that bokeh looks like as well here. And we'll see how the tracking is. I gotta crouch a little bit just so I'm eye level here. All right, there we go. So we're right here. Make sure I'm not totally blinded. Um, but here I'm gonna walk out of frame. This is at the 200 millimeters and then back into frame and it seems to catch pretty good. So this test is with the Viltrox Speed Booster. It's a 0.71 times. I'm at 70 millimeters on the Tamron 70 to 200. The sun is bright, I'm bald, I'm reflective. So we'll see how that is. I'm probably gonna go in the shadows over here. And this is at F2. Now it's a 2.8 lens, but because of the Speed Booster, it's an F2 
and that way it's giving more light. I do have the KNF Concept ND filter on here and it's at its most darkest, I guess you could say. We're at ISO 100 and the F2 and we're gonna do the um, sunlight for the white balance. So I'm not gonna change that, it's not on auto or anything. And so this is 70 millimeters. Now the lens is at 135 millimeters F2. So the bokeh should be a lot more blurred out with the zoom in. Um, I'll walk back to the sidewalk, so the end of the driveway. And then I am in the shadows here. So I'm probably not gonna be blown out. It's not gonna look as bad. Let's get closer up and then you can see more of the blown out background coming into the shadows here. I'm about 15 feet away from the uh, camera right now and um, yeah, blown out, come into that. So now this is 200 millimeters. Again, I apologize if I am blown out because of the sun. This is the best test I could do right now. So 0.71 times gets you very close to the full frame equivalent to the 200 millimeters. Um, it might be shy just a little bit, but it's very close. Um, and the bokeh is gonna be a little bit more blurred out than the 2.8 because the speed booster is giving you a 2.0 on this Tamron lens. So let's go all the way back here. And um, image might look a little bit better just because I'm in the shadows now, but I'm pretty far back. Um, if I had to guess, I am probably, I am probably about 100 feet away from the uh, camera. And uh, here we go. Let's get back into that frame. So that catch, is it following me? So now you've got your Canon R7 is pretty much like a full frame camera. This is the 200 millimeter still. And you just need that speed booster right there. And if you're interested in the speed booster, if this is a look that you like, I do have the link to the description below on where to purchase that. Um, and they're pretty reasonable in cost. So again, I apologize. My bald white head is totally blown out. So from my experience with the 70 to 200 G2 2.8, putting on the speed booster, bringing it down to a 2.0, giving it that amazing bokeh in the background and having it melt away, photos were extremely impressive for me. Video was good as well, and the tracking was better than I thought it was gonna be, but when it came to photos, it performed very well, and I highly, highly recommend it. Is it great for on the go? No this thing weighs a ton. It is heavy. You will not do this at a wedding. Your arm will be killing you. There are other alternatives to that. But if you're in a studio, if you are in a fixed location or on a tripod, you're going to get images out of this for a relatively inexpensive price. That's totally worth it. And I'm going to leave that link below for the Viltrox so you can actually purchase that if you're interested in that adapter. I do highly recommend it. And for alternatives out there that are lighter and that 70 to 200 and are pretty good, there's gonna be a few out there that are really nice. Oh, you weren't supposed to show up already. Maybe the next video. Like, subscribe, check out these videos over here. You're probably gonna like them. And you know the next video is gonna be amazing anyways. So hit that alert button. The one that beeps when I send a video out.